Welcome to Australian Fairy Tales, the podcast. Old stories are travellers across time, messages left like a fossil to be rediscovered and reinvented. And this October, the Australian Fairy Tale Society will take a deep dive through time, culture and language to explore fairy tales from an Australian perspective and discover what flesh they wear today. And throughout this podcast series, you'll meet some of our academics, creatives and performers. So good day, I'm your host Shirley Way, and it's my pleasure today to welcome Patsy Poppenbeek. And first and foremost, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners, the elders, past and present and emerging at the land on which I stand, which is that of the Yuggera Turrbal people in Brisbane. I acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which our listeners stand and extend a welcome to Patsy and those of your country. Thank you, Shirley. I'm talking to you from the land of the Wadjuri in and around Melbourne and along the coast. Beautiful, beautiful country. Mm. Um, Patsy Poppenbeek is a romance and fantasy writer with appearances in several anthologies and publications. Importantly for our chat today, she is editor of South of the Sun, Australian fairy tales for the 21st century, an illustrated book of fairy tales, but not the kind you read to children at bedtime. These Australian tales are strictly for grown-ups and flow from the talents of award-winning authors like Carmel Bird, Sophie Masson, Kate Kennedy and Eugene Bacon, with artwork from Lorena Carrington, Kathleen Jennings and others. This is a, a fabulous anthology, Patsy. Would you like to tell us how it began, please? I would, thank you. Um, it actually began, I think, probably, uh, when I gave a presentation at the 2017 conference, which happened to be in Melbourne, in which I suggested that it was time for an anthology of Australian fairy tales because I knew from having written and for and read the e-magazine of which you are currently the proud editor um, how, how many talented people there there are in the Australian fairy tales society um, so I, I, I knew we had the talent, we had the connections and so on. I'm sorry, and that snore was from my little, do my little fairy dog, who was, a, who was minute, but manages to give huge snores. Um, plus, I'd had the experience already with um, my writing group, the Cartridge Family, in which we produced an anthology of stories called Melbourne Subjective, which is obviously based in and around Melbourne. And we've been able to do that because we won a grant from the Melbourne City Council. So I was quite optimistic about getting money to, to um, help us to produce an anthology because believe it or not, producing a book is expensive. Yeah. And, and we wanted to pay people because we knew how writers and illustrators tend to do so much work for, for free or for minimal wages. And we didn't want to do that. So anyway, that was my suggestion. That was that we apply for a grant and produce an anthology. Then when we eventually got together, we did apply for a grant from the Australia Council, which we didn't get. So then we decided, we did, also we did have some seed money from the Australian Fairy Tale Society, but obviously being a smallish organisation, although a growing one, it wasn't huge and wouldn't have enabled us to pay everybody. Um, so then we, then we ran a possible campaign and much to our delight, we not only achieved our target, but we surpassed it. And it also enabled us to publicize the book. So that's how it got started. It's uh, basically run by a committee, although I do chair it, and I, but I delegate as much as possible. <laughs> I'm firmly of the opinion that a good group is much better than a high achieving individual. And I think this experience exemplifies that. Have I talked enough? Oh, no, it's wonderful, Patsy. So it is entitled South of the Sun, which um, is a reference to another fairy tale. Tell us about that. It's based on the, on the fairy tale called um, Oh my God, Eastern, Eastern Moon, Western the Sun. And of course, in the stress of talking to you, I've completely forgotten what the plot is, but I always love the title. 
And of course, he thought south of the sun uh, worked on, on several levels in that obviously we think of ourselves as the sun-drenched country. We are in the south, southern hemisphere. And of course, there's always the lure of alliteration, of which as writers, we're very fond. <laughs> There is indeed. And there's a wonderful diversity of tales in there, reflecting, I guess, the diversity of people's backgrounds as well. How did the selection process work? Well, we did advertise for people to send us their work. Uh, we also did ask people whom we, we thought would be interested. Um, and in fact, that's how we've been able to get several of of uh, you know stories from people such as Ronnie Wavehill who was a distinguished elder um, and um, who supplied us with a wonderful story about mermaids Indeed. which you don't which you don't <laughs> think of as being Aboriginal but they are they are um, so would you <clears throat> now you did mention that there is a mermaid connection to your or mermaid tail connection to your family. Would you like to tell us about that? Well, yes, I suppose. Um, I've all, personally, I've always been very fond of mermaids uh, because I love the story about the the selkie or, or the mermaid who um, was basically forced to become the wife of a fisherman who caught her and pulled her tail off. And she, having no memory of her life at sea, agreed to be his wife. And he hid the tail in a chest. And when she was tidying up many years ago, and after she'd given birth to several children, she found the tail. She took it down to the sea. And the tail basically became alive and she slipped into the tail again. And she, sw she swam off. And he was heartbroken, as you can imagine, and, his, and the children were as well. Um, but she called back to him that, Basically, he had stolen her life from her, and or but that she would give the whole family a blessing, and that was that none of them would ever drown. Now, much to my surprise, I always love that story. Much to my surprise, a second cousin of mine found out that that story actually belongs to my family. And at a family reunion, we all said, What? And um, then we started telling stories about how, yes, we had escaped drowning. <laughs> Lots of us had escaped drowning several times. So, as I said, it's a, it's a story I'm very fond of and feel, I don't know that I believe in it, but I can't disbelieve in it either. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Mm. Very amazing. So, so yeah, so we've got Ronnie in there as well, which, and of course, Wave Hill Station's very... The walk off in 1966 was a very pivotal moment towards land rights. So how important was it to have an Indigenous voice within the anthology? We felt it was very important um, and in fact there are several writers in the collection who are of Indigenous origin. There's also one writer whose mother came from Papua New Guinea and um, several others from places like uh, Sri Lanka and so on. But, but I mean, I'm not saying we chose people based on where they came from, but we did try to be as, as multicultural as possible. Yeah. It may, well, perhaps we should just pop back for a start. This is an, a fairy tale anthology. So first up, what do you consider to be a fairy tale? Well, that was one of the things that the committee really had quite long discussions about because, of course, what the difference is between, you know, the whole cat in, within fantasy, there's allegedly fairy tale, folk tale, and all sorts of other variations. And we consulted um, Dr. Rebecca Ann C. Do Rosario, who, who wrote her um, PhD on this and amongst other things. And she said, well, once upon a time, the people tried to define fairy tale, they are still trying. The truth is like all storytelling, the form and nature of the fairy tale is changeable. The roots of fairy tale reach deep into the past of myths, legends, and old wives tales. Not all fairy tales feature fairies. 
Fairy tales can include magic, supernatural creatures, metamorphosis, happy endings, true love, superstitions, sword fights, cross-dressing, and even morals. But there are no rules and no definitive claims on authenticity. So in the end, we settled for saying we wanted some kind of, of supernatural, not ghosts, maybe, in fact, one ghost did end up in this, um, but some kind of fae element. Certainly. And so, so then what makes an Australian fairy tale? Well, again, that was something that we debated long and hard about. And we decided that, um, first of all, it was distinct from Indigenous storytelling. Um, and what we settled for was that you had to have at least some elements of the Australian landscape, flora and fauna, and perhaps language as well. So there had to be something that we, as Australians, modern day Australians, felt was Australian. And you're certainly aiming for it to have a contemporary feel too, I believe. No, we, well, we were very happy with the contemporary stories that we got because that was bringing fairy tale into daily life. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that several of us admired about writers like Charles DeLint, who writes about fairy tale creatures in Seattle and other writers as well. Um, but we, we, also, we were also very happy to get historic tales uh, about settlers encountering strange creatures in the bush and so on and so forth. And um, one particularly good one, although it, it is quite confronting, is, oh, sorry, my other little dog who, who disapproves of the other dogs in her park opposite. Oh yeah, there's, there's one particularly confronting tale about, um, Tasma, um, about Tasmania and um, and the elimination of of native animals and of the people there as well, and that is by a rather well known writer called whose name of course has just disappeared from my memory, um, Kathleen Jennings. Oh, no, not all kinds of fur by Danielle Wood. Sorry. There's an updated version of All Kinds of Fur, mm -hmm. a fairy tale that at least some of our listeners, the listener, will be fairly familiar with. Right. And so um, I note in the, the forward, Rebecca Ann leaves us with another question. Is less, what is a fairy tale? And more, what can a fairy tale be? What can a fairy tale be for you, Patsy? Well, I think it, a fairy tale can be almost anything that, that the writer wants. Although if, if you're writing in the fairy tale genre, you, you do almost automatically tend to revert to archetypes. And personally, I love a happy ending, even if it's only a happy ending for now, I like a happy ending. And, and I think, most a, a lot of readers do like happy endings providing they proceed logically and i think certainly for now afflicted as we are by a pandemic and so many governments that are so anti doing something about the climate and other, you know, other rational things it's lovely to turn to a story with a happy ending think yes i can help bring back bring about a happy ending even if it's only fictional. Excellent. Now, within the fairy tale society, you've also been a fairy tale ringleader for quite some time. So, for you, in terms of examining all of the, we get about six tales a year to examine, and Joe, our ring maiden, provides us with bibliography and points to ponder. Um, amazing bibliography and points. Amazing bibliographies. To so, I'm just so in 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 the period of time that. Yeah, but like the Fairy Tale Society now has been going for almost 10 years. So how has your understanding or thoughts about Australian fairy tales 
or their, you know, or the Australian interpretations of fairy tales grown and developed over that time? Well, that's a very difficult question. <laughs> um, I think I've, you know, sort of having been exposed to Joe's points to ponders and, and everything, um, my my knowledge of fairy tales has grown considerably. Um, and I've been exposed to fairy tales that personally I don't like much, mm. but they're still really interesting to read. And one thing that's impressed me is just how wide ranging fairy tales are. They tackle all sorts of issues and give you something to think about, you know, of all sorts of things. I mean, like, where does evil come from? Mm -hmm. How can we deal with it? Etc. Etc. What is love? Um, um, what other kinds of love are there other than romantic love? Etc. Etc. There is much to ponder. There is indeed much to ponder. <laughs> and in this October, we'll be pondering yet more with the theme of Australian fairy tales, flesh or fossil? Question mark. So. Um, people are responding to that question in different ways already. Do you have any early thoughts yourself on the theme? Well, I think, I mean, fossils and the whole thing to do with dinosaurs and megaflora and fauna and all that kind of thing are absolutely fascinating. And in a, in a way, you know, some people think of fairy tales as being fossils that are dead, etc., etc., but but like the real like the actual fossils they have so much to teach us mm. and we and we can learn so much from them and i mean as we were talking about the other day we, we, we were contemplating you know where did the idea of dragons come from mm. maybe it came from some passed on memory of of the megafauna mm. who knows who knows indeed it's fiery breath to boot. Yes. <laughs> so there will be much to there will be much to ponder this October. So thank you very much for our chat today, Patsy. You're very welcome, Shirley. Thank you for asking me. Yeah. So I'm your podcast host, Shirley Way, and I've been talking with Patsy Pen Poppenbeek, editor of South of the Sun, Australian Fairy Tales for the 21st Century. More details about the anthology are at australianfairytales.com and all fairy tale enthusiasts are welcome to attend a fairy tale ring either online or in their state and or to attend the Brisbane conference on October 1st and 2nd 2022 and there creatives, academics, performers, we will all fairy tale enthusiasts will explore the question Australian fairy tales flesh or fossil. To learn more about the society, visit AustralianFairyTaleSociety.org for details and our social media tag is at AustFairyTales. <laughs>